Hi there, Trina here today. I'd like to walk you through a couple of really quick and easy tricks you can use to make your e-learning audio sound a little more professional. Now, most of us don't have access to professional voice talent, nor do we have access to high quality recording equipment or sound booths. So this means that our audio can sound amateurish right when we really wanna sound our most credible. So to illustrate this point, I'd like to play you some raw audio that I recorded and then compare that to some audio I've edited using the tricks I'm about to show you. So first off, here is the raw audio. Let me just play this for you. Hi, this is Trina here, and I think today we'll spend some time talking about how to edit your audio like a pro. Um, I wanted to give you a little sample of audio to work with, and I'll be using Audacity to edit this audio sample, and we'll see how it's done. Okay, so not tragically bad, but I think we can do even better. So here is the version that I've edited, and let me play this one for you. Hi, this is Trina here, and I think today we'll spend some time talking about how to edit your audio like a pro. I wanted to give you a little sample of audio to work with, and I'll be using Audacity to edit this audio sample, and we'll see how it's done. So there you go. The first version, a little muddier, um, a little more background noise, some more pauses. Uh, this version, very bold and crisp and clear a lot easier for people to hear. So how did we get here? Well, obviously part of what you probably noticed from before is that there was background noise and in the after there really isn't any background noise. Background noise is probably one of the easiest things to remove using Audacity. Um, and that's because Audacity has a built-in noise removal tool. So even in the quietest environment, you're gonna pick up the hum of the overhead lights or sounds of footsteps in the hall, but that doesn't mean you have to live with them. So let me show you how to clean that up. So one of the first things I'd like to do is record about two to four seconds of dead air before I start speaking. This gives me a clean sample of the background noise for my particular environment. So here's an example of some background noise, um, and it might be a little subtle, but I think you'll get the idea. So not too distracting, but net of net, it's uh, unnecessary and we have the skills and the tools to clean it up quite readily. So what I'm gonna do is uh, select this dead space that's at the beginning of my, uh, uh, of my um, audio track. And I'll go up to the effects menu and select noise removal. And now I'm gonna click on get noise profile. Now what this is doing is telling Audacity to look for the wave patterns from my sample. So all the little waves that we see here, all this, all this little fuzziness, um, it is gonna look for those same patterns throughout the rest of my audio track. So I've given it the profile, now I just click Control A on my keyboard to select my entire track. And then I'll go up and select the, from the effect menu again, Noise Removal, and OK, and now, you see that it, it visibly reduced all of the um, audio track by removing those noise patterns. So now we've got something that's a lot quieter. In fact, you really can't hear anything at all. So that little bit at the beginning, um, I can remove now. Uh, I don't need it any longer. And now I can turn my attention to some of the other things that made my edited audio track uh, sound a lot better. Now. I can use this same technique that I just showed you to also remove pauses and breaths and tongue clicks and ums from my speech. Breaths are probably one of the things that are, are easiest to remove because they look like little tails at the end of your, um, of your audio. So for instance, here's one, and I'll play this for you so you can hear. Just a sharp intake of breath that's a normal part of speaking but we don't have to live with that. We can remove that. So up here in the effects menu, I'll go to noise removal. I'll select get profile. And instead of selecting my entire track, I'll just keep this area selected. I'll go back up to effect again, noise removal, and say okay. And now it has removed that breath intake 
from my from my audio. So um, one other thing that I think sets my uh, edited version apart from this version is that it was a little louder. Um, I realized that I'm not a professional audio talent nor a professional audio engineer, and I'm a little soft spoken. So to compensate for that, I could go in and tweak my audio and adjust things like the bass and the treble, but it's also just as easy to select my entire track with control A, go up to the effects menu and hit amplify. Now what this does is it um, automatically, basically Audacity automatically suggests an optimal audio level which is the loudest that it can process your audio track without degrading it. So it brings it up to the loudest volume while still maintaining good quality. So this little number here is its suggested amplification. Now, if you're a little hesitant to embrace this, go ahead and click preview. Hi, this is Trina here. And I think today we'll spend some time talking about how to edit your audio and if you like that, you can just click OK or you can manually drag to adjust this. I tend to go with the suggested amplification because it's usually quite a bit better than what I could do on my own. So I'm just going to click OK here and you'll see that it's now amplified the track. So that's really it. Removing the noise and raising the volume are two of the most powerful things that you can do to increase the, the quality of your e-learning audio and improve the audio experience for your learners.